been a privilege and honor to have been taught my trade, which built my skilled career by the sacrifices and with the integrity of all the veterans, my supervisors, other journeymen, and fellow apprentices during my 15 years in naval ship repair. The time shared with the active duty personnel working together to keep our fleet in tip-top shape encouraged my understanding of why we are a nation with freedom and open dreams that can be reached with our own hard work. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my job shop. My name is Keith, I'm your host, and I'm here repairing America one project at a time. Now, before we get uh, busy with uh, the Rutland here and we have our projects, we're gonna be working on Pearl. We're gonna set up uh, some soft jaws and set up that gear and get ready to um, grind the inside of it. But before I get to that, just a quick note here. I was at the uh, computer this morning and electricians came in the door and said, hey, we're gonna button up uh, your electrical, your three phase, and uh, get it ready for inspection. So if you look, the cable hanging down is all tucked into the box properly. And on the outside of the building, they, uh, they, they've got the bitter end out there done. Uh, they said uh, here shortly, meaning, you know, next week, uh, a month or two. Um, what, it's been three, three years I've been waiting for this. Uh, so I'll believe it when it's actually running. All right. Uh, so anyway, let's get on to our project. But I just wanted to pop in with that little bit of news right there. We don't need three phases to run the Rutland lathe here. So... We won't have that in the background. While I was healing from my surgery, I, <laughs> on the phone and on the computer, um, shopping for um, quite a few things so that I'm able to perform the work the way I want to perform it on rebuilding Pearl's gearbox. So I invested in uh, an arbor for the K&T, uh, new wheel cutters for cutting the spline, um, soft jaws so that we can grind the inside of that. And that's what this this video here is going to be about setting up the soft jaws and and getting that ready to grind. Also, um, I was given some small wheels. I'll go through that little package deal and uh, share the, the letter that was passed on with that. When I s opened up the, the wheels, um, and also too, I had another viewer uh, that sent me a um, uh, drawing for the adapter that bolts onto the end of the spindle for holding small uh, stones with the uh, deluxe uh, grinder but I went ahead and I actually found an ID grinder spindle for mine so we'll just we'll be able to s swap them out so anyway I got that over in a the box there so we're gonna be getting into the the grinding here after we get the gear set up in the lathe all right we're gonna we're gonna bring you in so that uh, we're gonna we're gonna mount the the soft jaws. But before we mount the soft jaws, I know basically this diameter for the gear is three four hundred on the outside here, and I happen to have a readout on this lathe. And after having the readout on this lathe, I I know I want to put one on the Monarch. So I haven't decided exactly what style I want to put on there. But I am uh, looking more towards the DRO pros, um, putting one of their sets on there and sponsoring the veterans um, that, that run that as well. Um, okay. Well, even, even with soft jaws, you're, you're turning... You, the reason why we're using this is because we're going to hold a diameter that has a irregular shape to it. But it is diametrically supposed to be running in line with the pitch. And I'm, I'm going to take pins 
and I'm going to verify that after I have it set up, but I need to, I need to start somewhere. So, and that's, I'm going to have to hold it by the outside to grind the inside. So I'm kind of looking and do I want to go ahead and mount the soft jaws this way and make my first female cut in on, on the tapered side or do I want to turn these around on the outside and go ahead and go with something like, like that in there. Uh, less meat off of the soft jaws so that there's more meat on the soft jaws for later on projects. Okay, I think I'm going to mount them in this way here. But before we do that, I want to set my boring bar, which I'm going to use to machine my soft jaws, I want to set this to run with the the readout so that I know that I can come out to that three four hundred dimension really close. I can sneak up on it, get close to it, and then I can do a couple little test fits and make sure that I'm grabbing this gear the way I want to grab it. And you want to, if you can match this diameter, your soft jaws. Are gonna are gonna be holding this more uniform and less chance of this running off. And um, I may have to take a stone along one of these sides. They feel pretty smooth here, but I want to make sure that I am getting that in at, at the face as well. I'm also gonna take and indicate the the uh, machine surfaces that are on each side of the bore in here to just make sure that they're running true. So I can verify it there and verify it by a pin in because I'm going to have it set in there but I should be able to reach in somewhat with a pin in between the jaws there, three point at least, and know that I'm running concentric because this gear is second in line in the shaft and I don't want it to be lobing okay um a lot of <laughs> a lot of comments in the past video say hey why don't i send this to uh, adam and have him flame spray it and uh and then turn it down um there's a couple reasons for that this has still got a rough bore in here and this has got two keyways that are exactly the width of the uh, of the diameter that's going over it. And flame spray is just a coating. It is not blending base material with rod material like well fusion overlay process, which I do on a lot of things. And also too, to come in and have two keys and, and then even if you're gonna TIG weld and all of that, you're still gonna have to come in and touch up all of that so you're going to put in invest all of that time in the repair on there but i also have two other gears that ride here and here and when it gets close to fitting this up and we start grinding the shaft to fit i'm going to modify these other two diameters here to take up a little bit of that play so i'm by making a new shaft i'm not just taking care of this one gear here that we're going to grind and clean and modify and make a modification to this diameter to fit. We're also going to modify these other two diameters for the idling gears that the shift cog that slides back and forth on the spline so that those are tighter as well. All right. Back to... <laughs> it's, it's all the thoughts and everything that that I'm going through to put this this machine back in 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 shape and it's exercising my skills all right I found a brass um, bushing and it was a cutoff of one that uh, we needed for a project so it's actually a, a, a pre-machine bushing so it has nice and true inside and outsides concentric with each other um, at least for the tolerances that I need to have. Whenever I'm putting something in a three jaw, I kind of give it a slight spin. Um, so by doing that, it, it helps you align a round diameter in your three jaws. It, it, you do that just general practice. I'm just kind of talking out loud. All right. So we're running pretty smooth there. Okay, the inside is two inch diameter. 
So basically, I'm just bringing this out till I rotate this, and I know I'm making contact. Even though I have a nice overhead light on this, I actually need a, a light to shine in. I just haven't set one up yet. Okay, I'm seeing just a little tiny powder right there. I'm just ma barely making a uh, barely making a scratch, almost three quarters of the way around in that bore. All right, I'm going to set it on the. indicator here all right the readout is set for that two inch diameter now I can just back this away and we can concentrate on mounting up the uh, the soft jaws this is kind of a good good time I'll, I'll take and wash out all the openings there where the heads sit in and I'm gonna probably wipe the heads off here and we'll set the jaws off to the side. There's something that I've done. Each of the jaws in this one little area right here, I stamped one, two, three in the same location on each of the jaws. You're machining these to fit after you've got them hooked on and your surfaces are always true. But sometimes if you pull them off and you want to go put them back on, you stand a better chance on them being back in that original position and running true if you have them numbered and you put them in on the same jaw, just like your uppers, your jaw uh, halves. Uh, when you flip them around and put them back on, you want to make sure that you're you're running all the components for jaw one on on the the scroll uh, support and out on the jaws. You want them to match. All right, so this is one, and it's going to be mount, mounted right on here. Um, okay, it stays on there itself. The standard jaws have two lengths of bolts. They both will screw in and grab. And ideally, probably the long one would be best if you actually had another three of that length. I possibly do, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these, because you have a choice on either putting them on the in on the inside or the outside and I'm gonna put them on the inside because the jaw is gonna be forced this way here so I'm gonna put the strong bolt or the long bolt on the bottom I've already blown off the jaw so I'm not putting a, a dirty jaw on uh, or a dirty surface there and then I'm gonna put the one that will grab but it only grabs by about three threads on the outside All right, I'm going to go around and mount the rest of those. Right, our jaws are mounted in, and now we want to we want to position our jaws close to where we want them to be in relationship to where the surface cut out on the jaws is going to be holding our gear in place. I think I want that I want that full surface just above this back hole here. So I'm going to screw the jaws in here. And if we wanted to, we could bring the center in here and hold that gear right up against there. But I think, I think we'll be able to get the just of it here. Okay, the center will fit there. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and crank it on up. Slide this into position here. And just lightly come in and hold this so it's center. And then we can get a good eyeball on that. They're pretty symmetrical, so it looks the same on all three jaws. Um, and it looks like we're pretty close to the edge of the hole, so I really want to tighten that up just a little bit so I don't see the hole. I know that we're going to be around there. Okay. I'm going to say that's pretty good for a closed position. Now, we need to put a spider or spider the jaws. Meaning, I need to put something inside, preferably on the inside jaw, the steel part of the jaw, the scroll section of the jaw, the original jaws. 
because they stick out just a little bit from this surface here. And if I can get a diameter to where I can put it in there and clamp down on the jaws, and we're going to be holding this in the closed position, the tension, the scroll, and all the motion is in the tension direction. And then we'll be able to machine the aluminum part of our jaw to make the pocket to receive the gear. Took a few bars. Three quarter was too small. It rattled around in there pretty good. I came up with this seven eighths rod and all I did was lightly cracked it open from where I've, I estimated we wanted. And we're gonna be able to slip that in. I'm about that far in, plenty deep enough, okay? There we go, I'm gonna just tighten up. All right, we're set up on the spider, meaning we're pre-tension and lock the jaws in the closing position. Now we're, the, we're ready to machine that. Uh, putting our boring bar back on there that we set with our diameter, or we a knowing diameter. Now we're gonna machine this out to the diameter of the gear and we're gonna the width is 731 almost three quarters and actually the width where the two thrust surfaces are um, that is uh, three quarters seven you know point seven five oh right on the money so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna machine it for the three-quarter depth I want to hold this gear as true as possible grabbing all that I can on the outside diameter and the face that will be on the back all right let's pick a speed that we can turn these and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take the fastest speed here right off the bat <clears throat> Okay, I'm just touching that now, and that's uh, it's it's at a diameter of uh, one inch, one sixty-seven, so about one and three sixteenths of an inch um, on the inside there. And I could feed in, or I could feed out, uh, roughly. Let's go ahead and I'm going to touch the outside, so I can set zero on. The other half of my readout here. And I'm just gonna take I'm gonna take 50, but I'm gonna crank out until I get to close to our diameter so we kind of know where we're gonna be. I might go get some Aluma tap too. Will help with the cutting here. like three four hundred is what we came out to or what we said that diameter is gonna be there's three right now 100 200 all right there's 300 there Okay, I'm just going to back this up a little bit and hold this gear in here. That's good, okay. Slightly under that diameter, and that's what we want. So we're going to rough that. We're going to rough out to this diameter, and we're going to rough down to close to the three-quarter depth. And now I'm going to try a, a cut straight in. Now that I know where that mark is, I got a visual... Even though I have the readout on here, it's, uh, it's always the same thing. You always want a visual. Okay, that was the one seven. Okay.
All right, let me see if I can add a little bit of filter to this. That might be a little better. All right. Sometimes I forget I have settings that <laughs> I used to not have. <laughs> okay, I'm just uh, brushing a little bit of uh, aluminum tap on here to see if it doesn't help out a little bit. It's an interrupted cut, so I'm not really pushing it. I could go more, but it, it, why, why bother? That sounds a lot better, just having a little bit on there. I'm about an eighth of an inch on the radius here out to my mark there and we're just starting to almost I think on the next cut here we might be a full cut maybe one more interrupted cut and then uh, we'll be catching that whole diameter right there the chips are flying off a little bit different and they're actually they're I'm gonna have to well I'm just gonna make sure that I have one on um, on pearl a hood for the jaw so anyhow we're getting down there I thought I'd stop it and give you a view of what we got here as far as the pocket we're 700 deep here and uh, you can't measure straight across but we are getting out to that 3 300 scribe line there or cut line <laughs> readout says I'm at 3 300 and we know that this is 3 400 we will just verify that one more time here 3 400 okay okay we're gonna come into uh, 375 here it actually stopped at 376 but I'll let it run there Okay, we're going to go right to our uh, three four hundred on on this um, on this pass right here. Okay, and I'm in the depth plus about five. I'm gonna feed across the face here. Just give that back face a skim cut in.
almost tempted to leave it right there, but I have to, I have to take another cut. Okay, I, li I like that because I got it. Yep. Okay, I can rock it and tap it in there, but I don't want to scratch the surface of it. All right, I'm happy with that bore and the face. I'm going to come in and touch the face and then feed out to it. And my readout is actually 3.422, so I'm about 22 thousandths over. By, so by touching it and coming and doing all that cutting and vibration and all of that and letting everything settle in, uh, it was pretty, pretty, pretty cool to be able to sneak up on it like that. And that's, that's how I wanted to do it. So, right, so we're going to skim that, and then I'm going to just lightly chamfer the outside of this right here. And I'm going to make sure that that bore is, is uh, more open than that gear so that my stone can pass through there. So while we have everything set up, you don't want to forget and have to do that. Okay, that was our 3422. Our bore on the gear we're gonna clean up is 1.122, Um So we're gonna we're gonna open up that bore, or at least touch this bore in here, because we know that I just went back to it again. It's like one. 184 It is larger, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a little true cut in here at least one two hundred Okay, it's not really showing anything that's sticking up there. Nope. All right.
It looks good and true to the naked eye, but uh, indicators will show. Okay, it took a little bit for me to manipulate uh, the the indicator around to where you can see it from from where I have the camera set up. <clears throat> and actually, it's pretty pretty good. That camera is eight feet away from this project right now, and you're seeing it that good. Um, so that I. I really do love having that camera because it lets me put it in some good operation uh, locations. Um, so I'm leaning over and I'm kind of looking at that indicator and it looks like we're each one of those lines a half a thousand. So it looks like we're about a thou, maybe just a little bit more than that in that one particular location there. I'm not quite square with my uh, indicator on there, but I'm actually on that surface just outside the keyways all the way around I haven't done nothing to it that's exactly how it was sticking in there I'm gonna find a pin now so that we can put it in the the gear tooth itself and come in and measure the peripheral at the pitch line right now before we do anything I know that I could kick it probably just a little bit or just try tightening and loosening it and and I'll manipulate it to where if this runs good out here and I can't get that any better than you know we haven't seen what we have out here yet, so I, I can't shoot off my mouth and make a decision yet. Didn't have to go too far right here on the top of the lathe. I actually have um, center drills, and that center drill happens to set in there pretty good and without rocking back and forth, and it's in a pretty good position there. So I think I'm going to come in here with my indicator like this. And I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to set it to where it'll go over it, and there we go. Okay, I'm gonna get on that high spot right there, and let's see here. We're gonna go. Zero is the high, right? Okay, and it goes one revolution. Okay, so it's only it, it's one and fifteen thousandths or so for the revolution there. All right, let me let me bring you in as close as I can get you and be able to see the gauge here. And all right, now. I'm going to set zero as far as my travel in and out right now so that I could be set in the same exact measurement. All right, so we got that. That's, you see that? That rocks on the zero. Okay. I'm going to go over this side here. I'm going to pull that out of there and we're going to back out. Okay, now we're going to put that in here. We're going to come back in to our zero that way we're in the same distance in and looks like one one and a half okay forgot which way I went well and uh, we're gonna <laughs> Okay, that's jaw one. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. We're gonna go that way anyway. All right, jaw one come into zero, and by coming in and out and everything else, we're gonna go around a couple times just to make sure that we're all there. And okay, that's pretty close to that zero. Maybe. Uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna say zero. All right, so that was jaw one. This is jaw two Coming to zero
Okay, it looks like two thousandths. Next jaw here. Come into our zero. Okay, it looks like it's about a half, half a thousand the other direction. Let's go ahead and we're just gonna move over one tooth and we're gonna we're gonna compare a series of teeth in between here just so that we Okay, I've gone I've gone around and I've seen enough to where measuring over my center drill here, I'm within two thousandths on the peripheral and um thou thou and a half off on that little face right there. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out, turn it over, put it back in, and I might I might find a sweet spot in there. That will give me a combination of this face here and the gear and the gear teeth pitch line, or cl as close as I am with this. I'm working the t I'm working the teeth at the working surface of the teeth, and that's that's my two references that are important to me. <laughs> um, I I turn it around. And I had pretty close to similar situations, so then I marked I marked my my high spot there, and then I actually put it underneath one of the jaws here. Um, uh, you know, that's where I ended up being at this location right now, and I'm coming up to within a half a thousandths of of that zero. Excuse me, and. Maybe a quarter thousandths right there. And on zero there. All right. I'm happy with the peripheral where this is at, where this is located at right now. Um, I haven't checked the face yet, so now I'm going to set up for that. I brought, I, I, I moved the indicator and I moved the camera so that you come in. Um, I brought it right up here to my zero here. All right, I think you can, you can see that. that you're, you're looking at the needle at, on the horizon line there, but you'll, you'll, you'll get the just of it. Okay, I might see that fluctuate less than less than a half a thousandths. All right, our part is ready to set up a tool post grinder, and grind that bore until we get a good, clean, true, full surface. All right, until next time, get her done.